I don't think that Byron should be referring to me as good old anything, especially after he has cast aspersions on my ability to make bird calls, and that coming from one of possibly the second most tone-deaf person I've ever come across in my life. Anyway, I've now had my rant about Byron, and we can look with comfort and joy at this very intimidating species of spider. It is building, or she is building her web, and this is a gorgeous golden orb web spider. The gorgeous is an additional adjective I've put in there. It's not officially known as the gorgeous golden orb web spider. And there is her husband sitting patiently waiting for her to do the housework. Of course, that is where the um, patriarchal society of the spider ends. Yes, she will do the housework. She will even do the cooking and killing. But she may also eat her husband if she gets very hungry and find another one. So he has to be very careful. There are the remains of her dinner. They're not very good at washing up, are the golden orb spiders. But they do that for a reason. They put those husks there so that birds don't fly into the webs. Now what's always interesting to me is that they are, of all of the orb web spiders I know of, probably the spider that makes the web that is the least neat. And you can see there that the strands that she's making, as she, I mean, look at how she uses her back legs there to attach them to the support strands, but they're not as equally spaced as they would be on many other orb web spiders' nests or webs. And there's certainly nothing like as intricate or as neat as the web of the tropical tent web spider, for example. But look at the astounding delicacy with which she's doing this. An octo girly, well, perhaps with a name like that, uh, you are partial to things with eight legs. You say, what a beautiful spider. It is an astonishingly fantastic spider. Look at the male there. She's just sort of gently tapping him on the back, saying, have you mowed the lawn? And he said, well, I was going to. And she's saying, well, if you don't, I might eat you. I'm feeling a little peckish. It's getting toward breakfast time. You can imagine her voice being quite silky, but intimidating. Gee, this is a wonderful picture. Look at the spinnerets there producing gold and silk. It's one of the strongest substances known to nature stronger than high tensile steel. There, yeah, she's pulling it out. And it's not that it's interesting. She's missing a leg. Is she? No, she's not. She's using... Oh, okay, I can see what she's doing now. She's using her left back leg and her right middle back leg to attach the silk. You see how untidy it is there? That is just fantastic. It is the most wonderful picture. Fergus, you're doing a sterling job there. But you can see she's just slightly offline. Not that I suppose it matters at all. Well, obviously it doesn't. She's going past her husband again, who seems to not have moved, despite her instructions. Now he's just looking afraid. Now she can, might give him a little bit of a cuddle. And there she will sit, waiting for something to fly into the web. I think this might be the best golden orb web spider sighting I've ever had. I've never seen them build before. And R. Lara Moore, you say that this is Spider Engineering 101. Yes, I suppose it is. Now look what she's done, she swapped over, she's now using, because she's going the other way, she's using the back, her back right leg, 
and her left back middle in exactly the opposite way to the way she was when she was going the other way around. That's quite clever. So she's using the back left leg as a sort of anchor to move around, to pull herself around. It is just astounding. Justin, you're wondering about how they produce the web. Justin, it's a very complicated process that happens inside the body. The silk is basically a complex protein, and that is synthesized in a specialized organ within the spinnerets. Uh, there will be a whole lot of enzymes and a whole lot of chemicals that are attached to each other, or amino acids that are attached to each other using enzymes and using um, RNA, which is a sort of sub- uh, not subatomic, but it's a very complicated molecule, a bit like DNA, inside the cells there, and those will code specifically for the proteins that make silk, which is a very, very complicated process. Now, Byron, I'm going to have to compliment, unfortunately, which really hurts my heart to do that, but he's managed to find one of the most invisible creatures in all the world.